It's been almost a year since I reviewed the Garmin XT GPS for the motorcycle. I'm going to give you the full review and some new information at the end of this video, and that's coming up right now. Hey everybody, I'm Cruise Man, and today we're going to talk about this Garmin XT GPS, which is specifically made for motorcycle use. Now, I'm going to give you a full review. I want to get right into it. But before we do, I want to remind you that if you're interested in motorcycle content, motovlogs, product reviews, motorcycle reviews, and just kind of how-to tips and tricks, we already have over 450 videos on this channel that deal with those subjects. So if you like that kind of content, I'd like to invite you to click that subscribe button down below. And if you click the little bell icon, YouTube will notify you when we come out with new videos. Now, I'm going to give you a full review of this. We'll go and watch that video that I did a year ago. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to come back and give you some additional thoughts on this Garmin XT GPS. In this video, I'm going to give you my review of the brand new Garmin Zumo XT. Now, this is the newest GPS from Garmin, specifically designed for motorcycle use. Now, I want to start out by saying that Garmin did not sponsor this video. However, they did send me the Zumo XT to test and review. You may hear me make a few references to how this compares to my Zumo 595LM, which is my previous GPS, and I consider it to be one of the best I've ever used. Let's take a look at what comes in the kit with the Zumo XT. You get pretty much everything you're going to need for a successful installation on just about any type of motorcycle whether you ride a Honda Goldwing or a BMW GS or some other adventure bike, this GPS comes with everything you need. Now, what it doesn't come with is anything for automotive installation, whereas my Zumo 595 LM did come with everything you needed to use it in the car. But that does shave about $50 off the price of the XT, and I'm sure that's why Garmin did it. One of the first things you notice when you peel off the sticker is this big, beautiful, shiny, glossy, reflective screen, kind of like a cell phone. Compared to the more dull, matte finish of the Zumo 595LM, the screen is also much larger. Even though the unit is, feels more compact, it has a 5.5 inch diagonal screen compared to only 5 inches on the Zumo 595. This new glossy screen is super bright and easy to see even in the brightest sunlight. That was one of the biggest complaints that Garmin had with the previous Zumo models. However, it comes at a price. You'll notice more fingerprints even with your gloves on this glossy reflective screen. But that's a small price to pay for the beautiful display. If we look at the back of both of these models, you'll notice another difference. There's only five electrical contacts on the back of the Zumo XT compared to 18 contacts for the Zumo 595. Now that's because the 595 had a harness that allowed you to connect external microphones, external speakers, external USB ports, and things like that. They've stripped all that away from the XT, assuming that the rider is going to have access to a Bluetooth headset and doesn't need speakers and microphones and things like that. Makes it much more streamlined. It makes it much, much easier to install. Now, there's some other differences back here as well. You'll notice on the 595LM, there's actually a door on the left side, and that's where you can access the battery and the micro SD card. This door no longer exists on the XT. I'm not sure how you replace the battery on the XT. Perhaps you have to undo all the little screws and take it apart, or maybe it's not even a replaceable battery. I just don't know yet. I haven't found out. By contrast, the micro SD card on the Zumo XT is hidden underneath one of these waterproof rubber flaps. It's a little difficult to figure out how to get the SD card in. I struggled with it at first, but I finally figured it out. 
The other little waterproof rubber flap is for the USB connector. And for some reason, Garmin went with the older style USB connector rather than the more modern USB-C. There's also an external speaker on the Zumo XT, allowing you to use this when you're walking or hiking. On the mounting cradle, you'll notice that there's only two electrical contacts, which are for power. I'm not sure what the other three contacts on the back of the Zumo XT are for, but it's very easy to snap into place, and once it's in place, it's very secure. And unlike the Zumo 595, Garmin does not include this little rain cover that protects those electrical contacts when the unit is out of the cradle. I'm not sure why they don't include that. The Zumo XT has built-in Wi-Fi, which is very convenient. Once you've logged in to your Wi-Fi system, you can download all the latest updates and maps right from Wi-Fi. It's very, very convenient. You can also register the product and completely set up the device. It's very cool. It's hard to overemphasize what a great job Garmin did with this 5.5 inch TFT screen. It really is super bright and it is able to give you a lot of information, more so than the previous Zumo 595. Now along the top you'll see a series of icons. We can see the satellite signal strength, the vehicle type, the Bluetooth icon showing that that's turned on, also your cell phone, whether or not it is connected, and the current time and current temperature. Uh, you can, of course, choose Fahrenheit or Celsius. It also indicates the Garmin Drive app and whether or not it's connected. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. And, of course, your fuel settings and the battery condition. Now, the screen itself has the typical Garmin where to and view map icons, but down at the bottom, you'll see another series of icons. Of course, you can stop the current route with the stop icon. There is a track route that lets you create a track of your current ride. The music icon allows you to select a music source and start playing music through the headset. Of course, you have a variety of apps you can access here. You can also adjust volume settings and then your main settings for the GPS itself. When it comes time to telling the Garmin where you want to go, it has an excellent interface like most Garmin devices. Here you can see the address feature where you just simply enter a house number uh, and then hit done and then enter the street name. And what I love about the Garmin system is this type ahead feature that will make suggestions as I type in snap. Uh, you can see up at the top Snapdragon is one of the options. And if you just simply click on that, it will put that in for you so you don't have to type the whole thing. That's very helpful when you have gloves on. Here the Garmin system is giving me a couple of choices and if I select the address I want and click go, it calculates the route. And on the right hand side you can see it asks me if I want to avoid highways. This is a great feature so that you don't have to go into settings and say avoid highways every single time. This little pop-up screen also shows me the distance, how long it's going to take me to get there uh, based on the speed limits and my arrival time. Of course, you can close this little window by clicking on that small X in the bottom right-hand corner. There are also a lot of clickable areas on this screen. If you click on the arrival time, it will bring up another window that shows you all the different times to various destinations. And no matter what screen you're in, you can always click on the little return arrow on the bottom left to return to the previous screen. It's a very good interface. Now let's click on the speed indicator and see what comes up. Another screen with a ton of information. Now, of course, the bike is not in motion right now, but you get the idea. You can see the miles per hour, your current direction, the temperature outside, the arrival time, how many minutes it's going to take you to arrive, what your distance is, and if you're on a route, it will show you the distance to the next waypoint. It's very cool. It shows you when your next turn is, the maximum speed, and just 
elevation, and tons of other valuable information. Now, if we return to the main screen and click on the little tools icon at the bottom right corner, you can see there's even more information available to you. Here you can stop the route. You can even edit the route. You can mute the notifications. And then, of course, you can go up ahead and see speed light cameras and all kinds of other information, such as gas stations, uh, restaurants. Here you can see there's a cycle gear 15 miles ahead. And of course, you can always close these little pop-up windows, clicking that X in the right-hand corner at the bottom. You can easily zoom in or out of the map view using the plus minus signs on the left side of the screen. But it's even better than that. You can use the pinch technique like you would on your cell phone to zoom in or zoom out your map view. And yes, it does work with gloves on because I have tested it. Now, here's a tool I really love, and that is the cities ahead. Let's assume you're on a three or 400 mile trip. You want to know when is the next town coming up? Maybe you need gas or you're a little hungry. This shows you the cities that are coming up on your route and what services are available in that city. Another handy tool I really like is the elevation tool. When you click on it, it shows you your elevation for the next 30 miles, your current elevation, in this case, 519 feet, and then what it's going to be on the 30 miles coming up ahead. Now, if you have the Garmin Drive app on your cell phone and it's connected to the GPS, you have access to live traffic reports. So if there were any delays on this route, it would show you that in this place. You also have weather and weather radar through the Garmin Drive app. Now, when you click on weather, it will show you the current weather conditions for your destination, in this case, 844 Snapdragon Lane. If you want to see weather radar for your area, uh, it will provide that as well. In this case, we have a clear day. It's not showing any clouds. Another feature of the Garmin Zumo XT is the bird's eye view, which gives you satellite images of your current location or your surrounding area. Now, you can easily move around the map using your finger. You just simply touch and drag, and you can kind of see a satellite image, and you can zoom in uh, to a certain degree. You can't zoom in a lot, but it does give you an idea of the area from a satellite perspective. Here you can see what the Garmin XT map looks like when you're riding on a route. Your route will show up in a very bright magenta color shown here. Not only do you see your current speed that you're traveling at, but you can also see the speed limit. Now this works on some of your larger boulevards, not so much on small residential streets, but it's still a very nice feature to know the speed limit. Also, if you're riding over the speed limit, the map will show you with a red indicator around your current speed, so you know that you're speeding. Now, you can also get audible alerts and notifications through your headset for this as well. And the XT will also notify you when a speed limit up ahead is getting ready to change, so you can start slowing down. Now, as you get within about two-tenths of a mile of an upcoming turn, the XT map will show you what lane you need to be in to make that turn. And you can customize the map settings to show icons and notifications for school zones, curves are coming up ahead, railroad crossings, and more. Now, if you have smart notifications turned on with your cell phone, the system will even show you text messages on the right-hand side of the screen. And if you hit the play button, it will speak that message to you so you don't have to try to take your eyes off the road to read the text.
Now, unfortunately, Garmin did not include any way to reply to these text messages, either for, through voice recognition or maybe just a series of canned pre-programmed messages that you could send back. Something like, hey, I'm writing right now and I can't text you back, uh, but I will contact you as soon as possible. Something like that would have been a nice feature to add. There's no way I can cover all of the features of this Zumo XT in this video, but there are a couple more I want to make you aware of because I think they're super cool. When you are at a location and you click on the little vehicle icon, in this case, it's a motorcycle, it will bring up a window. Now, this window will show you details of your current location. For example, the uh, GPS coordinates, the elevation, uh, the nearest intersection, the nearest address, so on and so forth. But what's really cool is you can save this as a saved place. So let's say you're at a restaurant or let's say you're at a friend's house and you want to easily save this as, say, a point of interest or a place you want to route back to at some point in the future. You simply click the Save button, and then you can give this place a name. In this case, I'm naming it Jess's House. So I'll remember, next time I want to go back to Jess's House, it will be in my saved places. Now, when you want to route back to Jess's House, you simply go to the Where To icon on the home page and select the saved icon. Clicking saved will show you a list of all your saved locations, in this case, Jess's house. So the next time I want to go back to Jess's house, I simply click on the go button and it will route me back there. Now there's one other app that I think is very important in the apps menu, and that is the trip planner. Now, the trip planner does a couple of things. It lets you create a trip or a route with multiple waypoints, or you can also import a route from Basecamp or some other mapping program. If I click on the Saved Trips button, you can see a list of the trips that I currently have saved. The Ride to Midland is a route that I actually created inside of this Trip Planner application. Under Imported Trips, like FM 455 Ride, this is a route that I created in Basecamp and imported into the XT. Let's click on Ride to Midland and take a look at what's inside. Here you can see a list of my starting point, which is the green flag, and all of the waypoints along the way until I get to my final destination, which is actually my brother's house in Midland, Texas. And all of this was actually created inside the Ride Planner app. To learn more about how to use Trip Planner to create your own routes, check out my tutorial video. I'll put a link at the top of this video. Now, if you want to know more about how to use Basecamp, which is a computer-based mapping software from Garmin, which is free, I have a whole series of videos that show how Basecamp works and how you transfer those routes to your Zumo. Adventure riders are really going to appreciate the XT because of its rugged build quality, and they even include off-road maps. The XT can also be paired with Garmin's in-reach satellite communicators for two-way messaging, SOS capabilities, and location sharing. Another great feature for adventure riders. Another unique feature of the XT is that it works in either landscape or portrait mode. Now this is good if you need to remove the GPS from the cradle and walk with it, say on a hiking trail or something like that. So it works sort of like a cell phone mapping system. It's really a cool feature, and since it has a built-in speaker, it will also give you directions in either landscape or portrait mode. So how would I rate the Zumo XT? Well, for ease of use, it gets a four out of five rating. 
the screen itself gets a full 5 out of 5. This TFT screen is the brightest, easiest to use I've ever seen on a GPS. For the mapping software, it also gets a 5 out of 5. In my opinion, Garmin has the best mapping software and interface on the market. The included apps also get a 5 out of 5 rating. Just the trip planner alone is worth that. Ease of installation gets 4 out of 5. Battery life gets 4 out of 5. And value also gets 4 out of 5. Overall, I give this GPS a 5 out of 5 rating. I think it may be the best I've ever seen. So after having used this Garmin XT for about the last year, uh, I've used it on several different road trips and I've found it to be extremely reliable. Uh, as many of you know, I have a 2018 Honda Goldwing, which has built-in navigation, but unfortunately, it's just lacking. It's just really not well suited for multi-day road trips, and the route planning is sketchy, and it, I don't know, it just, just is not as robust or elegant as a Garmin GPS. That left me looking for an external GPS. Of course, this will work with any motorcycle. There's a lot of adventure riders that uh, buy these, and they also have a lot of features built into this GPS specifically for adventure riders. So it's a great option for those of you that have a Africa Twin or a BMW GS or any BMW or any motorcycle, any motorcycle that you need navigation and you want to do multi-day route planning, this is my GPS of choice. Now I've had probably four or five different GPSs over the years. Hands down, this is the best one I've ever used. It is that good. I don't use every feature this has. It has a lot of built-in apps that I don't use. I don't use the music features, but for multi-day route planning, I use uh, Garmin's Basecamp to lay out my routes. I import them into this GPS. I won't travel on a multi-day road trip without this. Are there some things about this I don't like? Or what is there about this I would like to see changed? It is a little messy. The screen gets a lot of fingerprints on it, uh, but it's easy to clean, so that's not a big deal. I wish the uh, display I wish Garmin would work on their graphics. I think if it had more of a Waze-like or Google Map-like graphics, I think it'd be nicer and I think it would appeal to more people. As it is, it gets you to where you want to go. So that would be kind of a nitpicky thing. I'd like to know, for those of you that own the Garmin XT, what has your experience been? Please put it in the comments down below. Now, I put links in this video and in the description of the video to my Amazon page where you can order this Garmin XT. There's also a smaller version, I think it's a 396, that has a lot of the same features. It just has a smaller screen. Doesn't have all the features, but it has a lot of the features. It's, I've heard nothing but great things about that GPS unit as well. I just love this larger, bright screen. It's just it really shows up even in bright sunlight. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you on the next Cruise Man's Garage.